You all right? Guys, I just knocked on a stranger's door and made an offer to buy every single item on their property, including all these old farm implements, including that old truck, plus hundreds of thousands of pounds of scrap metal and other sorts of treasures sitting over there. So now, <laughs> now we find out whether it was a good buy or a bad buy. We went back and forth on the price. We landed at $8,000, but the kicker is we have to get this stuff out of here in two days. I got nothing but time. We're only gonna be hauling off vehicles um, and anything that's basically metal. So the plan is we're gonna scrap some of it, we're gonna sell some of it, and you guys know me, I'm a hoarder, we're probably gonna keep some of it. There's never been a better time than right now to buy junk from your neighbors and cash it in on scrap value because currently, at least here in Utah, scrap metal is at about $185 a ton. And I may have just bought, I don't know, two, three, four, 500 tons worth of scrap. I don't know, the problem is, they didn't let me look at it. I wasn't able to come back here and measure and go through things. I just kind of had to throw an offer out there and hope that I win. I'd buy that for a dollar. So guys, real quick, before we start the video, just like we did on the excavator video where I had you drop a comment and guess how long it was gonna take us to get it out, I want you to stop and drop a comment below right now and guess how many thousands of pounds of scrap metal we're gonna haul out of here. How much you wanna bet? So we're gonna get the, the scale ticket and at the end of the video, well, probably not gonna tell you in this video, probably tell you in the next one, but we're gonna have a total number. Is it 100,000 pounds? Is it 200,000 pounds? Is it 50,000 pounds? Drop your guess below, but remember, the price is right, so don't go over. Whoever drops the comment that is closest to being correct, the soonest. So we'll keep this open for about a week or so. So whoever is right there closest on the money, you're the winner. So drop your comment below. You guys have seen bits and pieces of it, but this is our new equipment trailer from Craftsman, and I am pumped on it. This thing is a 100,000 pound, 50 ton rated trailer. They build them for pavers, but I looked at the design and was like, you know what? That's perfect for everything that we do. It hauls all of our equipment, all of our trucks. It's got a winch. It's got the big folding ramps in the rear, so it's a perfect load angle. And then I had them do a custom color. It's like this, this sparkling like, like bronze. You can't really tell, but it's got like this metal flake in it. Super pumped on the way it turned out. And we've been using the hell out of this thing and I couldn't be happier. So big shout out to Craftsman for helping us out. Their link is in, uh, a link to their website is in the description below. Um, give them some love. We got the old fire truck rollback tow truck. We got uh, Jackknife Jim brought a second semi today with our other uh, low boy trailer to haul off any of the other equipment. We got the Sandy excavator with the thumb, which that guy right there is gonna be like the real MVP of the show because picking up all this scrap and putting it in the dump and the uh, dumpsters and stuff, super stoked to have that. We got the Bobcat skid loader. We got uh, the new giveaway truck over there pulling our 40 foot gooseneck. Like I said, everything you see here has to be gone. We didn't agree to take like trash, trash. So there will be some trash left over, but anything that's metal, we gotta get rid of. Anybody want an old crane? It's mine. But look at this stuff, it gets better. Look at these old trucks. All this stuff is coming home with us. What am I gonna do with it? Probably stack it in my back lot and never look at it again. But it's cool. Look at this guy. Who doesn't want this truck? I'm probably gonna go load this on the semi right now. You got this old dump truck. You got that old winch truck. That is, I'm actually really, really, really excited about that one right there. That, my friends, has recovery rig written all over it. Maybe not the truck, but look at that bed. The big boom and stuff on it. I like it. Guys, there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, you'll see some of the footage here as we walk around. Like, that was, there's a stove in there. That was like an old camp that they would take up to the hills, like when they were working on jobs out in the mountains, and they would, sleep in there so I probably don't want to go in there because it looks like somebody has actually been sleeping in there but a giant spool of like winch line winch cable uh, old weird air compressor uh, flatbeds 
uh, drill pipe. This is the stuff that is a really hot commodity right now. Everybody is going crazy over drill pipe right now. And the reason for that is because drill pipe is super solid, like structural, nice round tubing that you can make fences out of. You can do, uh, I mean, you could drill with it, you could fabricate with it. Part of the deal was when I made the deal with them, they said, hey, there's some stuff that you can't take. So we're gonna come through and mark it. So anything with the yellow tag on it means that it's already spoken for, we can't have it. So we gotta watch out for that because I think somebody's still trying to run a drill operation. But uh, as you can see, for the most part, I, it just goes on and on and on and on. So for eight grand, I'm already, I'm already counting more than $8,000 to get my money back. And realistically, I think, I think we're gonna make some serious money if we, if we sell some of the stuff the right way. You know, uh, it is older junk, but junk always has a home somewhere. What we got here, Hunter? It's a 453 two-stroke Detroit that apparently doesn't run. I think the best plan of attack is if we can hook a battery up to it and get it turning over, just shove a bunch of star fluid down its throat and just run it on only star fluid and try to get all these functions working and suck it up and get the, the outriggers in and then just like winch it onto the trailer or something, I don't know. Star fluid's how we do it. Yep. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop the video real quick because I need to talk to you about this week's video sponsor. And the reason why they're a sponsor of this video is because as you have seen, we have a lot of cars, trucks, equipment, lots of different things that need lots of different protection. And by protection, I mean insurance. And that provides protection not only from us, but from other people. So in my career, in my adult life, I have had great insurance, I've had good insurance, and I've had really bad insurance. And I'll tell you right now, that some of the best money I've ever spent was been having great insurance. Great coverage goes a long, long ways when it goes up, comes time to make a claim. Um, but I'll tell you this, shopping for insurance sucks. It's literally the most painstaking, mind-numbing process because there's so many different places to go and you have to you know, shop around with all these different carriers and providers and honestly, it's not a good use of your time. 
what you should be doing is what I should be doing, which is like being out on the lake or grilling hot dogs or eating popsicles or doing fun stuff and shopping for insurance is not one of those things. That's why we leave it up to Policy Genius. Policy Genius is not an insurance company. They're basically your go-to you know, right-hand man, your personal assistant. They go out and shop all the different policies for you. You literally go to their website, answer a few different questions, and bam, they start giving you all these different rates and quotes from different insurance companies. So with one click, you can literally compare all these different rates side by side, and you don't have to go do all that legwork. Guys, it is literally one of my favorite things in the entire world because they take what is a terribly boring and just frustrating process, and they make it easy. The best part is they've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance before. Guys, it's a no-brainer. Give it a try. All you have to do is click the link in my description below, go over to their website, answer a couple questions, and bam, you're gonna start getting lower rates in minutes. It's worth a shot because guys, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. You even did the cartoon legs in the air. You know <laughs> you alright? Yeah, I'm alright. Disappeared. <laughs> no, I'm, I got him. Shot. With a little, high caliber right there. <laughs> is that like a, a gopher or something that just goes like this on yeah. the ground for like five minutes? That's <laughs> Where did you land it? <laughs> the ground. Just the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, one of the biggest items here in the yard is this old bantam crane. Uh, this is, I don't know what the weight rating is on it. It's a S628 model. Uh, it's got an old Detroit uh, diesel engine in it. And according to the seller, this thing ran like three years ago. It doesn't run now because they said either the fuel pump's bad or something. They were literally using it uh, to load something and then it just stopped right there and it's been extended and left like that for however long. Um, I want it. I don't know if I necessarily want to like use it as a crane anymore because cranes are finicky and they have to be certified and they have to have all sorts of like, you know, they just got to be like dialed in. You don't want to use a rickety old crane and you can't use a rickety old crane in commercial uh, applications. They have to be, like I said, uh, certified and safe. But some farmer or somebody might love this thing. And since it's such a cool little piece of equipment, um, I wanna, we gotta see if we can get it out of here and not scrap it. My goal is to avoid scrapping this thing because I just feel like it's worth more not being scrapped. However, <laughs> we've got a situation where literally all the outrigger legs are extended. The boom is fully extended. It's twisted sideways. So in order to make this thing transportable, we either A, have to get it running, B, crack all the hydraulic lines and push everything in manually with the tractor, or C, what we're gonna to try to do right now, which is basically just crank the engine over, spray a bunch of starter fluid in it to try to get it to spin, not expecting that it will start, but hopefully spin the hydraulic pump enough for us to be able to maybe move some of these booms and stuff in with the hydraulics rather than having to force them in. So it's uh, probably wishful thinking, but it's worth giving it a shot. It's worked on things that we've done in the past, but. This is a whole lot more hydraulics going on. And then you got Diesel Dave just kind of be bopping around over there, bonking things with the skid loader. As you can see, he's got a tremendous load on his forks right now. Try and get that crane going. Figure that crane's probably worth seven to 10 grand with, uh, if it's running. Yeah, that's if we take it to the auction just sell it as is clean it up we might be able to get 10 or 15 out of it but we got to get it running to get home or get it on the trailer is that your phone or my phone someone calling you did you hear a phone ringing my phone was ringing i declined the call oh come on answer it <laughs> well, you're more important at the come moment on, man <laughs> your words matter man yeah we'll uh we'll get that going get it out Unfortunately, the old Kenworth or the old uh, cab over, whatever it is. You think uh, Jackson would like to have that thing? I think he would. It'd be a nice little parts rig or something, but hey, maybe that's about want, it. Want, want to tell him something on camera here about the cab over? 
Hey Jax, we got a clean one owner cab over here with your name on it. All you gotta do is come pick it up. It's got a Cummins 350 in it. She's free. <laughs> it like wants to start. So uh, the battery system on the Sani is 24 volts. The battery system on this is 24 volts. We got the cables hooked up. We're gonna, we literally don't even have batteries in there. So we're just going machine to machine. Give it a crank, see what it does. Dude, it like wants to, wait, no way, no way, no way. That's not set up, that was not fake. That legitimately just started. Who knows if it's gonna run? Holy shit. Are you kidding me right now? Are you punking me? Did you do something? So the, the crane that we didn't think had any shot of starting just fired right up. Gosh, I love old equipment. This is the best, like, this has been sitting forever. And it literally is just running like a top. No starter fluid. We don't even know if there's fuel in there. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, well, let's uh, take advantage of it while she's running. Jimbo, you hear this? No way. This is nuts. That cable stuck at something right there? I think it must be. Yeah. Holy crap. This is nuts. I'm so happy right now. Let's see. Might have just died. Let's let's make sure it's got fuel because I mean with fuel this thing should run. That's that is nuts. That's that is super impressive. Easy, <laughs> yeah, seriously. That was not even going to be fun to watch. Huh? Good? That's. I couldn't be happier with how that worked out. I mean, granted, we still got a long ways to go, but it runs decent. What are you doing here, Hunter? Gonna get into the valve cover, and that's where the injector lines are. And then I'll crack all those lines so that fuel can hopefully like flow through it, and we can reprime the system. And then I'll put all those injector lines back together, and hopefully it'll actually run. Yeah, you gotta check engine light. <laughs> no check engine lights on this. Oh, yeah, it's good, man. No check engine lights. Yeah. Did you have it running a second ago? It, it barely runs. We look and see if the lift pump is getting power. What about, do we crack any of these filters? So that would be... 
I think uh, if we can't get fuel through this thing, then we're just gonna keep running it on ether to get the booms extended, arms retracted, uh, cause that seems to be working pretty well. Hopefully uh, the engine will put up with it just long enough for us to be able to get it together. Originally I thought I was gonna sell this thing. Now, I don't know whether I wanna take it back to the shop and try to sell it for, you know, as a crane or if we just take it straight to the scrap yard. Kind of a tough call. What was that one? Okay. Yeah. Do it again. Let's crack those lines. Hook this to the side. Actually, keep it straight. What's that? Hook this to that. Yeah. The eye in front. Keep it straight. Yeah. Pull the spreader bar off. We've encountered our first like major battle here in the scrapyard war. It's uh, the, what is it, the crane. It uh, didn't want to start. It did start long enough for us to be able to get the boom and stuff sucked in, which was very nice of it. But now we're trying to get on the trailer and unfortunately one or two of the tires went flat and apparently it needs those tires for support because it's just digging its entire frame right into the ground right now. Put on the, the far ones. That looks like I know there's a chain of doubt tied on there. I mean, that doesn't have a panel hitch, so probably can't, but we could pull it with something else, like a five ton. Not gonna lie, that was super satisfying. Oh, we got a panel hitch. Hot damn, we got a sketchy ass look. <laughs> yeah, of course you're still the driver. You don't have a CD on the lose yet. <laughs> All right, pull the tow truck over here, Hunter. Let's see if this bad boy works. The leaks in the air brake system? What air brake system? The what brake system? There's, the, the thing is, there's no hills between here and the shop, which is, that's gonna be our air brake system. It's actually just the air. We all know what Ethan would ask. He just always asks, is this legal? Hey, are we, are we legal? Is that legal? Who's legal? Are we, did we get a permit?
remember, our goal is to get this sold as quick as possible because the further we have to transport it, the longer we have to hold on to it, the more money it's gonna cost us. Time is money, boy! So we don't wanna cost money, we wanna make money. This trailer full of old drill pipe and well casing and all sorts of bits and pieces, we just text a picture to a guy and we got a $2,500 cash offer. Probably worth more than that, but $2,500 right now in our hand is way better than trying to figure out how to store that stuff. The amount of money I'm gonna be making would hurt your parents' feeling. Next item of business. We sent a couple pictures out to a couple of other buyers that we know on these fuel tanks. And guess what? We just sold all the transfer tanks and fuel tanks and everything over here for $1,500. So $2,500, $1,500 puts us at $4,000. So we're halfway there. Obviously that doesn't include any of the scrap value or anything like that, but we're not done. I also just got an offer to sell this well casing. It's this PVC pipe that's a really heavy wall, super thick stuff. That right there, my friends, 500 bucks. Probably like $10,000 worth of pipe brand new. So another 500 bucks right there. Uh, right here, we got this bad boy going to an old farmer, $750. So that puts us at what, 5250? Getting closer. Right, guys that's it uh we've pretty much got everything loaded and ready to haul out of here we got our last couple loads that we're taking out now this is uh breaking my heart the crane's going straight to the scrap yard but it's got some serious issues it's not worth repairing and honestly like i said time is money so we just got to get rid of this stuff a um, couple of other random things that we're going to haul out uh, later tonight and then we're going to go back to the shop and put a tally together of the total scrap weight to figure out how much weight we hauled out of here. And then we're going to figure out, obviously, some of the other, you know, add up some of the other stuff that we've already sold, like the pipe and the tanks. This will be our last day here in the yard. And now, go back to the shop.